Oh hey, didn't see you there. I was enjoying a beautiful, beautiful day here during the coronavirus lockdown 2020. I think it's day eight. Pretty sure it's day eight, at least it's my day eight here in Amsterdam. Actually, I'm down in uh, Alsmeer at a uh, beautiful windmill. I like a nice windmill location and I had time to kill. So, thought I'd make a little video here in the wind on a beautiful sunny day. It's sunny but cold. You know, the Dutch think that if it's sunny outside, that means it's warm out. If it's warm out, that means it's warm out. Otherwise, it's probably cold, like today. It's beautiful. But man, it's cold out here and windy. I don't know if you can hear it yet, but I'm sure you will during the video. So anyway, I don't want to waste your time. I'm sure you're really busy. <sighs> Wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, I don't know, why not capitalism? What's going on with this world of ours? And this... Yeah, that wind is, that impressive wind. Uh, maybe I'll just dub, I'll dub stuff over this. Look, an airplane's flying. Look, mommy. An airplane up in the sky. I don't see them too many, too often anymore. Wow, that's windy. So you'll notice with capitalism, you're destroying the peace, dude. Technology, what's the deal? So I don't know if you've noticed that uh, capitalism and this whole thing on money, uh, I've mentioned that it's not really real. Money doesn't actually have value. And you'll notice that uh, their solution to this economic destruction called the coronavirus is to print trillions of trillions of dollars worth of money to just sort of throw around. Uh, and of course that works because capitalism itself is sort of a made up uh, mathematical, it's not Ponzi scheme, but it's a mathematical fudgeable game. It really doesn't mean anything. So I think it's a good idea to print money in huge quantities. I think that's fine. Uh, it doesn't solve the unsolvable mathematical problem called capitalism, but it does help with the immediate problem with uh, capitalism basically coming up. But it shows how money is not an important thing. It is a ritual that we perform alongside active work. Uh, farmers are working. Delivery people are working. People in the food stores are all working. Bread stores are all working. Anyone who's involved in food and food delivery is working. Anybody in the medical service, they're really, really working hard. It's just people like lawyers who have no purpose, you know, politicians who clearly... Uh, <laughs> why, why do we have politicians? They don't, they don't do anything of any value at all. You know, in fact, crisis is their favorite thing. Crisis is the one moment a politician can pretend he has a value. And they're showing that at the very least, this batch of politicians are completely useless. So at the moment, this corona crisis is showing the weakness in all of our systems. And this is a perfect opportunity to rethink what we're doing and what we're not doing and how we can do it better. Because clearly, what we've come up with is not effective. Uh, capitalism and our generalized overall policy is a policy of destruction. You know, we don't have the capacity to heal. We just have the capacity to destroy. You know, <laughs> I can't even say billions on defense. It's hundreds of billions. When you count in CIA, etc., it's more than a trillion dollars the U.S. spends on defense in one form or another a year. Against who? I'm not sure. Because if it's the Russians kind of seems like the Russians have already won a uh, a version of a non-shooting Cold War. You know, they've undermined democracy across the entire globe. They've made a joke out of, out of Western democracy. Their own democracy, of course, is a leading example of a joke or sham democracy. But nonetheless, they've weakened and crushed democracy across the globe. So at this point, if your defense is supposed to protect your nation, I'd have to say our defensive system has failed miserably. So, like I say, I broke my hand a while ago. It gave me a chance to sit back and contemplate my life. Uh, the world's 
has broken its hand at the moment. You know, we 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 have to stop and sit back just to keep everybody from dying. And that's a perfect time to think about what we're doing. You know, think about your life and sort it out. So. You know, they had it figured out years ago. Most of those windmills are about 400 years old. Again, people don't like mathematics, but moment arms is it's a length of a lever and how you turn it. So that thing is four huge moment arms. And he doesn't even have the sails fully on. Uh, the amount of horsepower that thing can generate is just, just tremendous. 400 years ago, they made this machine. It solved so many of their problems. You know, how do you live in a place that's unlivable? Well, you need to have a pump that works constantly. Uh, this happens to be a very windy place. Trust me, I try to make videos here, it's not easy. They came up with solutions, really good solutions that worked for, worked for a long time. In fact, they're still using versions of the same system to keep this place dry. So, when you sit down and you look at your problems, you think, how can we fix this? How can we make it better? That's when you evolve as a society. That's where technology is so important. And that's the thing I think that a new system of government, or system of economic system, would allow us to encourage innovation. You know, at this point, there's no, there's no true encouragement for innovation. It's... You have to somehow sell it, you know. The thing that bothers me the most about uh, capitalism is that profitable has nothing to do with possible. You know, religion, colloidal silver, Alex Jones, you know, Jim Baker, they're selling sham cures for coronavirus because you can sell the impossible. And yet there are companies who develop therapies that might help. But because of capitalism, they can't sell the possible, you know. Profitable is a really, really dumb reason to do things, you know. Uh, you do things because they make sense, because they're advantageous, because they, they help, they're more efficient. Those things are helpful. That's just the worst thing about capitalism, that efficiency to capitalism is a bad thing, an anathema, if you like, because efficiency, it destroys the profit margin. You know, you need to have profits to make capitalism work. And as things become more and more efficient, there's just simply less and less profit to go around. So soon enough, you know, with the self-driving cars, right, this crisis is showing how we need delivery people, truckers. Or we can build a self-driving truck, especially when the roads are more empty, and then we can replace millions upon millions of high-paid truck drivers, which puts another huge hole in the economy. You know, oil has just collapsed down to 20 and under dollars a barrel. It used to be $120 a barrel. How can you explain to me a commodity is worth one-sixth of what it used to be worth? And how do you have a business at that point? Clearly you were lying somewhere because at 120 you should have been insanely profitable if you're even in business at $20. You know, clearly they're making money at 20 or they wouldn't even sell it. They just leave it in the ground till later. So I don't know. I think it's time we kick back and rethink our systems. And as far as I can tell, this is a pretty long video. But it's a really pretty day and I really like the, the windmill. So anyway, this was Socrates going on and on because I got nothing to do. I miss doing stand-up comedy. If you're ever in the audience or if you've ever been in an audience, Thanks so much. I really do love an audience. You, you, you guys and gals make make a really fun night. I hope to see you all again real soon. Take care of yourselves. Don't touch people. Make them laugh, but don't touch them. <sighs> people are dirty, dirty people. Look at the windmill. I'm gonna sit over here.